I know what you're thinking. You go to your local diner, you're sitting there eating your eggs and ham, and you're thinking, I want to live here. You go to your local grease monkey, they're fixing up your car. You're looking at the stacks of tires, and you're thinking, I could sleep in this garage. Well, if that sounded like you, then I've got a video for you. This is a video about all of the best garages and diner player homes available as mods for Fallout 4. I'm going to be going over five of the best today, and I'll share links to them in the description below. So sit on down with a warm caffeinated beverage and maybe a side of bacon, for this is Oxhorn's Mod Muster. First on the list today is the Slog Diner Player Home by Red Rocket TV. This mod completely outfits this little diner behind the slog that before was really kind of unused. I remember when I first discovered the slog and turned it into my settlement over there, I saw this diner back here and I thought, oh cool, what could this be? But it was just a big ruined location. There wasn't anything interesting about it. This mod makes it much more interesting. Uh, the mod author not only completely outfitted the outside, including adding a nice power armor workstation out here, but turned it into a player home. Now you won't be able to gain access yet until you activate the workshop at the slog. Once you activate the workshop at the slog, you will have access to the interior. If the door says barred, just activate it and it will unbar it. That's, that's a beautiful effect. Look at that light streaming in through this skylight there. Really cool, but we can turn on this light over here. And there we go, we got a beautiful little diner. Now let's uh, go over some of the finer points. This, of course, is our inventory sorting machine. And the way this works is we just put a bunch of our stuff in here. Um, maybe some armor. And... Maybe some food and stuff. Oh man, I got a lot of chems. Okay. Now this is more like it. That's right, Preston. This is more like it. So we've, we've got our items in there, and then the game is uh, the game is gonna automatically sort it. So let's see if it worked. Here's our ballistic and energy weapons shelf, and look at that. Inside, I've got some ballistic and energy weapons. Uh, here's my ammunition crate. Look, all of the. Uh, explosives uh, that I had on my person are now... It's nice not to have to be on edge every second. Thank you for that, Preston. Yes, yes it is. There you go. So they're in there wonderfully organized. Workbench light. Ooh, I didn't notice that before. That's nice. But yeah, this is an armor workbench, and that's a weapons workbench. These are nice compact little workbenches. And then display racks for all of your weapons. This is a chemistry station. Oh, but then there's these over here. Better Homes and Bunkers, Volume 3. There we go. This adds a new recipe, the Blue Plate Special, I to a I cooking station. You think you read that once? I just installed this mod. Calm down there, Preston. So here's the cooking stove. Let's see, Blue Plate Special. Let's go to Blue Plate Special. Small health region with plus one endurance, plus one perception, and plus one strength for two hours. Requires cram, a Mirelurk egg, purified water, and tar berries. Well, that's fitting because this is the slog. We have plenty of tar berries. Let's see. Blue plate special. Let's inspect this bad boy. Ooh, and it does come on a blue plate. Of course. <laughs> Wouldn't be a blue plate special unless it came on a blue plate. Let's drop that bad boy. All right, there's our blue plate special. But it comes with other stuff too. This is Better Homes and Bunkers Volume 1. There we go. The Starlight Storeroom. I actually did a mod overview of that place. Anyway, this magazine gives us a bonus component shipment. This one is the Oberland Station Basement. I did a mod review of that one as well. Adds another bonus shipment. So let's check our inventory here and go to the junk. Yeah, so I got a random copper and a random screws shipment by looting those magazines. Okay, pretty cool. But anyway, back to the back to this the player home. We've got this beautiful little kitchen back here. 
wonderfully decorated with all sorts of doodads. Uh, this is for displaying your Nuka Cola. Yep, you can dis display your Nuka Cola on the display rack. Uh, here's my refrigerator, and look at that. All of the dirty water that I put into the object sorter is now in the refrigerator. So, it does indeed work. Pretty stellar. Magazine rack over here. Here's a little dog bed for, uh, for dog meat. Oh, and there's all my armor in the armor locker. And look at this. This is so cool. Where's the bed, you say? I don't know. Where is the bed? Where could it be? Maybe I'll have to sleep on the couch. Let's turn off the light. Oh, no. It's a fold-out couch. That, it's, <laughs> oh, I love it. When I was in college, I slept on one of these. For probably four years of my life, I slept on a bed like this. And I honestly have fond memories. I honestly... I don't think I've ever slept on a bed more comfortable than that little pull-out couch in my studio apartment back when I was in college. It was, it was really comfy. Anyway, so that's great. <laughs> I, I really like that. Uh, but we're not even done. Let's uh, turn off the lights. Ooh, nice and dark, moody. Look at all those god rays, those sunbeams. But if we want to close that on up... Ooh. Oh, look at that effect. And we've got the Christmas lights in there. Oh, it's so cool. Bobblehead rack. Uh, robot display shelf. It's just... <laughs> I, I, I'm beside myself at how cool this is. This is one of my favorite things ever. So, a wonderful little player home mod right behind the slog. If you want to turn the slog into a settlement for all of your Miniman settlers, you can have your own private player home in this tiny little diner. It's protected so that no one steals your stuff. You can organize things. It's just wonderful. Thank you so much, Red Rocket TV. Of course, no video about garages and diners would be complete without... <laughs> A mention of the Red Rocket Truck Stop. The Red Rocket Truck Stop, hereby Sanctuary, is such a popular location that there are dozens upon dozens of Red Rocket settlement builds, settlement blueprints, and player homes. And I couldn't go over them all, so I decided to just choose one. And uh, of course, I can't mention this without talking about Eleonora's mod. Eleonora's mod, Rock and Red Rocket, is one of the earlier player homes here at the Red Rocket Truck Stop, and it's one of the best. It's one of my absolute favorites. Uh, she maintained this settlement's status as a settlement. You can still open up the settlement workbench just like you always could and build to your heart's content here outside the Red Rocket Truck Stop. However, the big change she's made is she closed off the truck stop itself and turned it into an interior cell. You can no longer build inside the truck stop. She blocked off that door. She fixed the windows here so that they're solid glass. She blocked off that door and permanently closed and blocked off the garage door. Instead, it's an interior cell player home. So you could turn this portion out here into a settlement for your Miniman settlers and then just step through the front door to enter your private player home. The interior is beautiful. As always, we wouldn't expect anything less from Eleonora. Check out the light coming in through those windows. Isn't that a nice touch? It's absolutely beautiful. And notice that she did maintain the original uh, floor plan of this Red Rocket Truck Stop. Many of the Red Rocket Truck Stops we find on the wasteland have unique floor plans, and this, this one maintains the unique floor plan of the one near Sanctuary. So starting over here, this is our power armor station. Uh, one of the things I always like about Eleonora's player homes is they do come with all of the modern necessities. Coming into the uh, garage, what was formerly the garage. Uh, this is a living room slash workshop. Here's the living room portion with a glowing television and lots of uh, wonderful little doodads on this knickknack shelf over here. A couch for entertaining and here's your private office complete with a silver shroud costume. I love the silver shroud corner over here. <laughs> That's pretty nice. Now, check out this workbench. This, uh, well, a weightlifting bench, I should say, and, uh, that's strange. That's strange. Earlier, when I checked this out earlier, there were, there was stuff written on here. 
Um, but it, it, uh, sorry, I'm a little confused. I, 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 I checked this out before I shot the video, and I came in here, and I was going to talk about the writing on this chalkboard, but now the writing is gone. All I did is zone in and out. Anyway, the writing just uh, talked about, you know, how many benches you pressed and how many bells you dumbed with the curls and jumps and all of that. Exercising and the weightlifting, right. It was all recorded here on the blackboard. Uh, I guess, uh, I guess, I guess the sole survivor erases the blackboard upon entering and leaving the, uh, the player home. Interesting. Uh, but anyway, here are some more workbenches. Here's the, a compact armor workbench right there and a compact weapons workbench right there. Erect Mr. Handy in the corner. That's a nice touch. There's your chemistry station. As always, everything you need for this to be a functional little settlement. Then coming on over here, this is going to be the, uh, the kitchen with some more personal storage. There's your Vault 111 steamer trunk, and here's a display case with some personal mementos from Vault 111. Your Vault 111 jumpsuit, your Pip-Boy, the special book, baseball paraphernalia, maybe that's Sean's teddy bear and bottle, I don't know. Uh, uh, wonderful little doodads, a sitting area for eating. Here's your kitchen, complete with a cooking stove and a running sink with standing water. And here's your bathroom, head on in here. This uh, part of the truck stop is made of brick instead of the typical uh, red rocket construction material, but we've got a nice bathtub over here and a pooping station. And uh, yeah, you may not want to invite company over and let them use... This is a very private home because there's a giant hole in the wall. Uh, I mean, imagine you come in here, you close the door, you sit on down, you want some privacy, and then... Oh, hey there, buddy. Oh, you want to toast your bagel? The toaster's right over there. Yeah, butter's in the fridge. Hold on. Be on a minute. And then here's your bedroom. Check it out. This is where that terminal used to be. But this is your bedroom with storage under the bed, storage on over here. Posters on the wall. I love all of these pre-war posters on the walls. Looking rather dapper. And this, of course, is a storage container made to look like a clothing rack. <laughs> I love that touch. It just looks so great. Uh, headgear, weapons, explosives, we, you could really get detailed with organizing. Uh, now this uh, entrance has been blocked off, of course, and the garage door no longer works. It is now a wall, but you may be asking, well, what happened to the terminal that was in here? There was lore on that terminal. I'd hate to see it missing from the world. Never fear, Eleonora thought of that. If... For some reason, you you need access to that old interior of the Red Rocket with the terminal and everything else. She preserved it for you in a separate interior cell. You can be teleported there by pushing this button. And here we are in the original Red Rocket truck stop, complete with the workbench and uh, everything exactly as it was. And then here's the terminal. Right there, the Red Rocket Terminal with all of those original Red Rocket doodads. So there you go. If you need that saved, if you're concerned with that for lore reasons, she preserved it all for you. Here, just click that red button. And then to leave, press it again. And never fear, she didn't touch the mole rat den. Let's see if I can find it. It's gonna be right here. Yep. Perfectly preserved as always. No changes made there. So there you go. If you love the Red Rocket truck stop, if you turned this into a settlement for your Miniman settlers and you'd love to have a beautiful custom player home, this mod is for you. Thank you very much, Eleonora. But let's say you want something with a bit more of a hands-on approach to it. Uh, well, this is the one for you. This is the Cambridge Diner Player Home here in the middle of downtown Cambridge. Here's that street sweeper corpse. Poor guy. Still sitting here sweeping streets even after he's been dead for 200 years. Anyway, it's a, it's the lovely part of downtown Cambridge. And uh, this is the diner that was typically here. And it's a nice little diner. It's a, an enclosed building, big waffles sign outside. Uh, but other than that, it wasn't really interesting at all until this mod. With this mod installed, it turns it into a player home. Let's check it out. 
So Slothy cleaned up most of the rubble and garbage that was littering the place, but he left a lot of stuff here, so there's a bit of work to be done, but uh, that's because it is a settlement. Where's where's the workshop? There it is. There's the workshop. A uh, player home. Sorry, not settlement, but it is a, a player home, and you can scrap as much of this as you want. Now, let's see... Uh, so we can scrap these, but there are some things uh, looks like we can't scrap like this espresso machine But if you have a mod like place everywhere installed just toggle extra object selection That's the insert key on my keyboard And then if you want you can get rid of that and then you can get rid of all of these diner Benches as well, but you got to be careful because you could remove an entire wall which, uh, which would be a bit of a bummer. But yeah, it comes with a jukebox. It comes with a lot of shelving. So this is the diner area. And if you wanted, you could leave this beautiful diner countertop completely intact or just scrap it using place everywhere. And then here's a big kitchen area, plenty of room for building. And then a storage area back here with all of these shelves that come with it. Uh, and it comes with two doors. Here's the main primary entrance. Uh, here's another storage. No, this is a bathroom back here. Although a big, big hole in, in the wall there. Not a lot of privacy. Glows green on in here. There are little accents of light. It's really beautiful. Comes with this working jute box. And I love this ceiling. Man, this collapsed ceiling with bits of, I don't even know what that is. Looks almost like glass falling from the ceiling. Looks wonderful. And then the second door I was talking about is right here. Brings you right back out to Cambridge. Uh, so, an alternative to home plate, really, for those of you who don't want a home in the heart of Diamond City, but would instead prefer one right here in the ruins of Cambridge, uh, it's a wonderful mod for you. So, thank you very much, Slothy. Next up is Starlight Blue by DJXJT13. This mod completely revamps the diner at the Starlight Drive-In. Now, I know what you're thinking, but wait, Oxhorn, we already have access to this as a settlement in the base game. Why are you including this as a player home? Well, good sir, great question. The reason is because he puts so much Am I getting a random encounter? I don't know. Where's where's that I I bought? <laughs> Are you looking for a new career in science? Cambridge Polymer where's... Labs is now hiring for a variety of positions. All right. Apply today. What are you doing in there, I bought? Okay, sorry about that. I got it. Interrupted by a, a Cambridge Polymer Labs I bought. But anyway, the reason I'm including it is because look at all the work he's done. The diner was a lot smaller in the vanilla game, and he used a tile set that we don't have access to, this diner tile set, to completely expand it. So this isn't something most people would be able to build on their own unless they installed a bunch of mods. And it's really well done. I'll show you the inside. Uh, so he changed this over here. This was uh, just a rickety old shack, and that didn't you know, that didn't fit, so he changed it into this little shack, which ha which uses the diner towel set, but inside it's pretty much the same, except there is this Vault 111 security guard, for some reason, all the way out here by the Starlight Drive-In. Not sure how he got here or what he's doing there, but yeah, so there's that. Uh, anyway, so outside, it's well decorated. We have a power armor station and uh, an armor bench, of course. All of this is going to be connected to the workshop, remember, because it is built on top of the Starlight Drive-In settlement. So it will have typical settlement functionality that we are used to. And then to gain access to it, we need to unlock this door here. Thankfully, it's just a novice lock, so it shouldn't take me very long to get in here. Unless I'm really bad at picking locks, which Got I may it. be, but I'm not, and we're in! And there we go. So look at this. Look at this wraparound couch. Look at that. It's so pretty. It's a wraparound couch in the middle of this diner. I'm going to go ahead and put my torch on here. Uh, this is going to be the kitchen area, and because it's part of a settlement, you can scrap as much of this as you want. Let's pop open the workshop. There we go. Yeah, I'm Lou. Looks like you can even... Do I have extra object select? Yeah, I did. All right. So I had extra object se selection toggled, and you normally can't scrap much of this. Well, you can scrap the Edatronic, though I don't know why you would want to. But with uh, Place Everywhere, you can use extra object selection to scrap as much of this as you want. 
magazine racks for all of our magazines. Uh, coming around the corner, and look at this. We've got a big cityscape here being invaded by UFOs, complete with a Nuka girl on a rocket from uh, the Nuka World DLC. More crafting stations over here connected to the workshop. And then these are just some wonderful little storage containers that have been decorated with a bunch of goodies. And I really like this. This is going to be your cooking area. And uh, in true Wastelander fashion, it's basically just a cinder block wall with a fire in the middle of your home, which I think is pretty fitting. Uh, seating right there, a mixing station for all of your Nuka Cola. Oh dear. And then this guy, he was hiding under my bed. What were you doing hiding under my bed? This is the master bedroom. We have a, a nice twin bed right there, complete with a with a steamer trunk for personal storage and all sorts of loot and doodads out here. And then, uh, oh, what's this guy doing? He knocked over my lantern. That's just rude. Don't know what he was doing back there. What was he doing back there? Well, I hope I can scrap him. If if we have a uh, scrap dead things mod installed, we should be able to scrap the dead bodies of these ghouls. Yeah, there we go. I got some bone and leather and fertilizer. That way these, these ghoul corpses aren't going to be cluttering up my beautiful new home. And then this is the part of the diner that we all remember. This big portion out here jutting out into the middle of the drive-thru. Uh, he, he kept that. He left that intact. Uh, a, a door that connects to the new wing. This is all brand new. What's in this? Is this the bathroom? Oh, I missed this earlier. Wow. Wow. That's a, that's a resplendent uh, painting in the bathroom. Uh, I'm pretty sure that that's going to get water damage. But we've got some st uh, standing water in the tub. Mirrors. Oh, and even a washer and dryer and a dresser. Well, he's just thought of everything. All of the finest things in life. Uh, let's head on upstairs. That's right. This portion is... Oh, no. Another one of these doggone blasted ghouls. Got to get rid of the previous, uh, the previous inhabitants, ladies and gentlemen. Uh-oh. What's, what's 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 he shooting? What was going on back here? Well, I mean it is defended. Oh, uh, looks like it was like a mole rat or something. He's got a couple of machine gun turrets out here, which is nice. But yeah, here's another thing. He completely leveled out the roof. No more wing of the roof, can't, you know, uh, crumbling down over here, looking all annoying. He completely leveled it out so that it's beautiful. He cleaned up the rooftop up here. It's flat. It's perfectly flat. I love it. With another machine gun turret out there for protection. And this second floor is another, uh, it's like a lounge with a porta diner. And remember, you can scrap all of this if you want so that you can build whatever you want. And then upstairs, he left this pretty much more or less intact. We still have that skeleton uh, snoozing on the, on the mattress there and even got the bullets. So he left this all intact. But there you go. So that's the uh, Starlight Blue, a wonderful mod. Thank you very much, DJXJT13. And last on the list today is Main Menu Red Rocket Garage by Shaggy August 25th, 1993. This mod gives you a brand new garage just outside the Red Rocket Garage that imitates the garage that we find at the main menu of Fallout 4. You know the garage I'm talking about. You log into the game and you see these beautiful slideshow images of this gorgeous garage that someone, possibly the sole survivor, has turned into a player home and yet you don't actually find that garage anywhere in the game. The closest we get is this red rocket. And yeah, it's awesome. And yeah, it's amazing. And yeah, it does have this garage portion which you could do anything you want with, but it's not exactly the same. This mod makes it exactly the same. Not only do we have the exterior building that is exactly like the one we find in the main menu, but the author has decorated the interior to mimic what we find in the main menu, including the wrecked Mr. Handy in the corner, the scrap junk and doodads all over the table, including the Pip-Boy, and the tools on the wall, the workbenches, the minigun in the corner, this little barter bobblehead. Do you get another one? Perfect. Okay, yeah, be careful. You're going to increase your barter. 
<laughs> Again, with an additional barter bobblehead doll. A guns on this pegboard, just like in the main menu. And then this is your own little personal corner with a teddy bear under the bed, a picture of your loved ones, and even the vault tech uh, spec chart as a poster on the wall. Decorations up on these shelves in the corner. The mod author was meticulous and made sure that this mod imitated what we found in the main menu precisely. Now, it is short on lighting, but this is part of your Red Rocket truck stop settlement. So you can wire any bit of electricity up on in here that you want. So, a wonderful little addition to everyone's favorite garage, the Red Rocket truck stop. Thank you very much, Shaggy. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Those are my favorite garages and diners, player homes. I had a lot of fun putting this video together. I, I have to tell you, one thing that I looked hard for, I probably spent uh, over an hour looking for, was an Adam Katz Garage player home. I, I found a few Adam Katz Garage revamps where they added a bunch more detail, added a bunch more scrap and junk, and that was great, but I didn't find any mods that turned the Adam Katz Garage into a viable player home. So that was a little disappointing, but I did find a bunch of really cool garages and diners. So I hope you enjoyed this collect collection as much as I enjoyed putting it together. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. I publish a new video Someone six days a week. Let's kill some of these <laughs> doggone raiders. If you would like to, ooh, oh, that was nasty. If you would like to install any of these mods in your own game, I include a list of all of the mods that I used in this video in the description below. So be sure to check that out if you're interested. But more importantly, I'm just so glad that you're watching this video today. Anyway, thanks for watching everybody. If you don't want to miss my next video, be sure to subscribe by clicking the subscribe button and that bell notification button. And if you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. Patreon subscribers gain access to a private channel on my Discord server, as well as a bunch of other cool Oxhorn perks. But more than anything, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, as always, with a brand new video. Palowski, nuclear protection on a budget.